In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Sega Model 2 emulator in the fastest time possible. Usually, I do like to go in depth, but for this video, I'm going to focus on speed. I'm also going to show you how to fix the infamous DirectX 9 DLL missing issue, and we're also going to be using some pre-configured files to make this extra fast. So all of your controls have already been preset. So you want to grab the emulator from the Sega Retro website. There's a few other places you can get this from, but this is by far the best place you can get it from. Then you want to grab the pre-configured files from this GitHub page. I'll put the link for this in the description below. And you want to grab the most recent version from the releases on the right hand side. Now you're not downloading both of these, you're only downloading the one that matches your controller input type. Xbox controllers use X input and PlayStation controllers use D input, if that helps at all. If you don't know what type yours is, just Google it and it should tell you. Then download the one to match. Once downloaded, you want to unzip them like I've already done here. Then just open both of them up. Then you want to transfer all of the pre-configuration files into the Model 2 emulator file system and make sure that you replace any files that are already there. When it comes to ROMs, you need to be using a Model 2 emulator specific merge set. Because the emulator is so old, newer ones are simply not going to work correctly. If you don't have one already, you need to create a ROMs folder within this file system. So just right click, go down to new, and press on folder and you want to call this roms roms in lowercase and then put all of your roms in that folder because that's where i've set it to and from here you can start the emulator and play some games however about half of you are probably not going to be able to do that because of a directx 9 missing dll if you are getting that error message don't panic it just means you don't have those older directx runtimes and i'm going to show you how to install these now so you want to grab the runtimes from the official Microsoft website. As you can see, it's the end user runtimes for June 2010. Just click on download and it will download the EXE. Now using this executable on its own is not going to fully install anything. All this executable does is extract the files that we then need to install. So we want to create a convenient place to do this. So just right click on your desktop, go to new folder, and you can call this whatever you want because you're only going to be deleting it afterwards anyway. Then you want to actually run that executable, press yes to this, and it will come up with this dialog box. You want to click on browse and select the folder that you've just created on your desktop. Then you want to press OK, and it will extract all of those files to that folder. Once they're extracted, you want to open up the folder that you've extracted them to, scroll about halfway down, and you want to right click on DX Setup. Then run this as administrator. Then all you need to do is go through the setup wizard all the way to the end, and that's it. You've successfully got the correct runtimes. Now that everybody has the correct runtimes, you should have no issues starting the emulator. And to run a game, all you need to do is go up to emulator and press load ROM. So not every version has been configured for here because they're simply not needed. There are either inferior versions, prototypes, or they simply don't work. And for the most part, it's the parent version of the ROM that I've configured for. However, there were some clones that needed to be factored in. And for a full list of what I've actually configured, if you go into the configuration folder, you've got a full list here. If it has an input configuration, it means it's playable. As standard out of the box, widescreen scripts are being used to hack anamorphic widescreen. And you can press F5 on your keyboard to toggle between 4x3 and 16x9. However, I do appreciate some of you are not going to want to use these at all. So if you go into the scripts folder, you can see I've also provided some 4x3 scripts if you don't want to hack widescreen. And all you need to do is just switch those out. When you're playing a game and you go to windowed mode, you get this game option appear at the top here. Click on this and you can see that we've got some cheats and other options. When you hover over this, it will show you every single cheat that's available for that specific game. And we've also got scan lines, again, for every single game. So turn these on if you're into that kind of thing. If you want to know what the buttons are, I've made these controller layout images for every single game. And these reflect exactly what I've set for those pre-configured files. And I've put these up over on the Launchbox forums, and I'll put a link for this in the description below. Now, if you want to resolve any issues, or you just want to go a bit more in depth, please refer to my older videos and this Launchbox forum page. They should contain most of the answers for most of your questions. There we go, that's how to get the Model 2 emulator set up in probably the quickest time possible. And hopefully I managed to fix that missing DLL issue by giving you a definitive fix and showing you how to actually do it. If you're interested, I've also done this for the Sega Model 3 emulator Supermodel, and I'll link that video in the description below. And if this video has saved you some time, slam me a like, and if you wanna keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.